climb on, I rise, giving all praises to Allah, the Father of the universe, the cherisher, and sustainer of all the balanced universes. Give the highest of honors to his holy divine prophet, Prophet Noble Drew Ali, the founder, the Moorish, Science Temple of America. Islam, Islam. we extend high honors to his forerunner, the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey, the founder of the Universal Negro Improvement Association, who did indeed warn and stir up the nations. Islam, okay. we extend high honors to the Moorish flag, the red flag, with the green five-pointed star in the center. The five points representing love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Islam, give high honors as well to the American flag, also known as the Stars and Stripes. This flag exists as a constant reminder of the European old Jew, the Moors, with compound interest. This is also the flag of our birth. Islam, we extend high honors to the noble Sheikh staff, noble vanguard staff, and keep the peace, and giving honors to you, the Eels and Bays, for without you, there is no Moorish movement. Islam, Moors, praise Allah. Um, we're not going to be long today, we're just going to hit a few points. Five of the Moorish Science Temple of America, Divine Constitution and Bylaws states, this organization of the Moorish Science Temple of America is not to cause any confusion or to overthrow the laws and constitution of the said government, but to obey hereby. The word confusion is a serious word because many times the prophet calls us to unity. Throughout his body of work, you'll find that he mentions the word unity many, many times. Right? The word confusion Con meaning against, fusion meaning to come together. Okay? Anyone against Asiatic people coming together is causing confusion. Islam? This is an ancient principle, this is not new. From the word fatana. Fatana, which is the three part root, the three letters fa, fa, ta, and na. Right? Fatana. Everyone, fatana. fatana. Fatana means to turn away, to subject to temptations or trials, to seduce, tempt, entice, allure, beguile. To enamor, charm, enchant, captivate, enthrall, enrapture, fascinate, infatuate. Goes on to say to be subject to temptations, to be charmed, to be tempted, infatuated. And further it goes down into the word fitna, this word here, the actual definition of it, of it. It says fitna, temptation, trial, charm, charmingness, attractiveness, enchantment, captivation. Fascination, enticement, temptation, infatuation, intrigue, and then it goes into the key definitions. For those taking notes, feel free to write this down. Sedition, which is S E D I T I O N, sedition, riot, discord, dissension, and civil strife. Islam Morris? All those last one, two, three, for five definitions, all deal with government. All deal with organized bodies. Sedition, 
Anyone guilty of sedition is basically a traitor. That's what the word sedition is equated to being a traitor, right? What's the traitor? How is the tra a traitor defined in U.S. Constitution, for example? U.S. Constitution defines traitor as one who offers aid or comfort to the enemy. Aid or comfort to the enemy. Islam, mm -hmm. Prophet Noble Drali in the additional laws defines traitor as, he says if you have, basically, if you're working or able, you have finances to aid in uplifting, I'm paraphrasing, aid in uplifting this nation, and you don't, so you are an enemy to the cause of uplifting your own people, and justice must catch you. Islam, right, and this word fitna, as you see, the definition right. If I mention the incident that took place in Charlottesville, Virginia, okay, which was a bunch of fitna, a bunch of chaos, taking place between groups of people that ultimately do not look like us. Islam? Islam. But as you scan the crowd, you would find people that do look like you sprinkled throughout the crowd. And you have to ask yourself, why were they there? If two groups of people that are not of your ethnicity have personal issues that are going on amongst themselves, that they feel as though they need to come to blows as a result, why are you there? What do you stand to gain? Islam? All right? Discord. Discord is the opposite of the word accord. The prophet tells us, he says, he instructs, no man liveth unto himself, but is bound by what? Cords to every living thing. That's the concept of being in accord. Islam, you ever seen in the military or in ROTC, they'll have these uniforms. And on the shoulder part here, there'll be a cord showing that you're in accord with the laws, with the, with the orders that have come down. Islam, all right? Dissension, right? The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the Quran of Mecca talks about, he says, uh, rank hatred has already appeared within your ranks. Basically, he's talking about there are those that, that are within your ranks that despise, you know, order and discipline. And anytime order and discipline is come down or is, you know, not even requested, but, you know, the order kind of it has come down, there'll be those that will mumble under their breath about what has to, what has to come down for us to operate as one body. You see what I'm saying? Um, that's that, that level of dissension that the Prophet Muhammad referred to as rank hatred. Islam? Sure. And the term civil strife, civil strife is basically those, the word civil, the root of the word civil is the word citizen. People that don't understand their civic duty or their, their duty, the rights and duties that are attached to being a citizen, this is what civil strife is. Islam? All right? All of these are found up under the word fitna. Okay? Um, there's also another word. <clears throat> Fatua. Everyone, Fatua? Fatua. Or if I put Al Fatua. And Futu, Futua. Right? This is the root word of the word of the word mufti. You hear the word mufti, right? This is the root word. Al Fatua. Right? What is al fatua al fatua is 180 degrees away from the word fitna, right? And fatua is defined, as, and again, I'm drawing from Hanswear Arabic English Dictionary. Okay? Hanswear Arabic English Dictionary. al fatua or fatua is defined as youth, adolescence, the totality of the noble, chivalrous qualities root word chivalry, of a man, noble manliness, or it could refer to woman, womanliness, being as the word fatua. At the end, this letter here is called ta marbuta. Everyone, ta marbuta. Ta marbuta is this same letter here. This letter is called ta. And what they did was they took and tied the tie and closed it, right? The word of, the act of closing the, 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 that tie, it's called rabata, which means to tie, 
right? This closed tie becomes known as ta marbuta, and any word that has that is feminine in gender. Islam? So it could, this could be man or woman, okay? It says no, noble manliness or noble womanliness, magnanimity, generosity, noble heartedness, chivalry, designation of Islamic brotherhoods of the Middle Ages, which this goes into your Sufi, your Sufi, or your secret society brotherhoods that were guided by the Muslims in those ancient days, right? Governed by the chivalrous precepts, name of several youth organizations in Arabic-speaking countries, right? And when this goes bad, it can also be known as bully, brawler, rowdy, tough, or racketeer. Because what happens is, if this is not overseen by higher qualities, fitna creeps in, and then it becomes all the definitions known in, known as fitna. Islam or? Islam. Now, I'd like to draw from, since our power and authority is derived from the great Quran of Muhammad, I'd like to draw from the great Quran of Muhammad, Surah 2, meaning chapter 2, verse 191. Let's go back to one. Let's actually go to verse 189. I'm going to 189 because there's a lot of um, talk about the eclipse coming up on Monday and how much we should put into that and so on and so forth. Right? Surah 2, verse 189. I'm drawing from the Muhsin Khan translation. Right? Surah 2, verse 189. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of Allah, the most gracious, most merciful. It says, they ask thee concerning the new moons. Say, they are but signs to mark fixed periods of time in the affairs of men. Islam? So if you study the ways of your forefathers and you study the sciences of your forefathers, you will know that when these signs take place, in, therein is a sign for you. But you have to be deeply rooted in the true and divine records of your forefathers to know how to properly interpret, or like some would say, rightly divide what that sign truly is. Islam? All right? One of the main things you want to know is that anything, anytime you're dealing with al qamar or the moon, right? al qamar deals with your shadow self, the inner self that nobody sees. Only you know. Islam? And anytime there's something taking place on that level, you got to guard the inner you. Not your outer you, not your outer ego. The thing that you, you know, that you want people to see. You know, it's not, during that time, don't guard that. Guard the inner you. You know, the, the, the thoughts that no one hears, but only you know what's taking place. That's the time to guard that. Islam? All right? But I'm going to move, move forward, not to stay too long there. And it says, uh, as, and for pilgrimage, it is no virtue if you enter your houses from the back. It is virtue if you fear Allah. Enter houses through the proper doors and fear Allah that ye may prosper. And this is an ancient parable dealing with, when you deal with, you know, uh, the laws of a land, right? It's stated that you come in through the front doors of the house, not through the back doors. What does that mean? There's an understanding that you obey the laws of the land in which you live. As long as those laws don't run contrary with what you're called to do by way of your divine creed. Islam? Islam. If these laws precept, you know, prescribe something that is against the precepts that were handed down to you by Allah through his holy and divine prophets, then you disobey civilly. Islam? Islam. All right? But when it becomes to the point where you're actually physically attacked, it goes into that. And this is our rules of engagement. Camel backing off what our brother Lieutenant Grand Governor had to demonstrate, which, by the way, I'd like to give honors, extend high honors to our brother Lieutenant Grand Governor Nazi Ali Hill. Honor to have him back in my right side. Islam? Islam. Praise Allah. Ayat 190. It says, Fight in the cause of Allah those who fight you. But, uh, but, do not transgress limits. For Allah loveth not transgressors. So there are bounds set to how you're able to respond, right? Once you back off the chaos, you're to stop. Islam? Because once you cross that line, you now become the persecutor. 191, it says, 
and slay them wherever ye catch them, and turn them out from where they have turned you out. For persecution is worse than slaughter. But fight them not at the sacred mosque until they first fight you there. But if they fight you, slay them. Such is the reward of those who reject faith. Islam? Mm -hmm. Verse 90 or ayat 91 where it says persecution is worse than slaughter. That word persecution is being used there. Fiyal lugat arabiyah in the language of Arabic is fitna. So it's saying that fitna or confusion or strife or trial or tribulation is worse than slaughter. So you'll notice globally, generally, Muslims or Muslims, if you need that for your sensibilities, have a thing where we don't deal with fear like that. Right? The reason why we don't deal with fear like that is because we realize that the innermost part of us is the Allah that is within us. And if my form falls, my physical body falls, that is not me, that is the vehicle that I was traveling in. Islam? So when it says that fitna or confusion or chaos or discord or any of that is worse than slaughter, it means that you're supposed to do everything you can to put down strife, right? Prophet Noble Dralee in the Holy Quran the Morris Science Temple of America teaches us that vice is not necessary to be tolerated. So if we're in an environment where we're seeing Negro, black, colored uh, activity taking place, if we're in an environment where we're seeing mental slavery by way of European psychology taking place, it is not necessary to be tolerated. You as a Moorish American Muslim, it's your duty to do everything you can to put that down. If you have to go into the political realm, economics, if you have to be a better father, if you have to be a better mo mother, you have to be a better auntie, uncle, whatever it is, where you can stop it in your immediate sphere of influence. And it is your obligation, the word obligation is wajib in Arabic. Everyone, wajib. Wajib. Like if in the, in the Arab, you don't allow the Arabic tonight because it's one of the languages if your forefathers, you should know it. But in the Arabic language, if someone comes to you, you know, if somebody does something for you, or you do something for them, they say shukran. Shukran meaning thank you, right? You might hear them say, la shukran, ayla wajib. No thanks. It is my wajib, obligation. You will hear something, you will hear certain things asked of you by Allah, which the word wajib comes up meaning it's not an option. It is your obligation to perform. Islam? Mm -hmm. Moving forward, two more verses from the Quran of Mecca. It says, but if they cease, meaning, that, meaning anyone who was attached, but if they cease, Allah is often forgiven, most merciful. It says, and fight them on, on until there is no more persecution or fit now. Right? And the religion becomes Allah's. And that religion becoming Allah's is what is referred to as Deen Allah. Right? There's certain places in the Quran of Mecca where it talks about Deen al Islam, meaning the means of judgment of Islam. Right? And then there's other areas where it says Deen Allah. Right? Yada kaluna fi Deen Allah. In other words, uh, when you see people coming into the religion of Allah in groups, in that sense. Right? But that religion of Allah, or that means of judgment of Allah, is what's referred to as universal law. Or some may know that as hermetic principle. Islam? Some may know that as Torah, the instructions that come down. Islam? It's one Tao in China, right? Or in Korea. Look at the Korean flag. You see that the I Ching, the I, what is it, I Ching marks in the four corners, right? Signifying the way, and the Taoist symbol in the middle, right? Denoting the way. The yin and yang principles striking harmony or the, 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 the fight, you know, to, to strike the harm. Because it's never that easy, right? But um, it says, and the religion becomes a laws, but if they cease, let there be no hostility except to those who practice oppression. Muslim is against oppression, period. You know, whether from our own or from foreigners. Islam? 
Okay? Now, that's dealing with the word fit enough. Now that's fit enough. We don't, we don't do chaos or confusion. In the more science stuff of America, we don't do it in Islam. We don't do it in the traditions and the customs of our forefathers. Right? Now, Everyone, wahada. Wahada. <clears throat> Oneness. All the way from the time when our prophet, Prophet Noble Drali, was in the form, right? A phrase was published, and it was published through the Moorish God, via the Moorish God newspaper, published from 1928 to 1929, every Friday. One phrase that was common in that was one prophet, one temple. Right? The prophet tells us in the Holy Quran in the Moorish Science Temple of America, he says, Truth is but one. Any doubts are of your own raising. Right? When you see anyone that considers himself to be Moorish American, all Moorish Americans are one. Anything to the contrary notwithstanding, meaning it doesn't have any legs to stand on. Islam? Islam. All right? The word wahada or wahid. Many have heard the word Tawheed before, right? Tawheed, which they say is the oneness of Allah, right? Tawheed comes from the word Wahada. <clears throat> wahada means to be alone, unique, singular, unmatched, without equal, incomparable, to make into one, unite, unify, Standardize, regularize, uh, regularize, to connect, join, link, unite, bring together, fit together, combine, consolidate, amalgamate in the sense of us coming together as clans and tribes in that sense. Merge, to declare Allah to be one, to pro uh, profess the belief in the unity of Allah, to be a monotheist, consolidate, or to fund. It says that to be one alone, um, and it goes on in that ideal, right? It also means to be agreed, unanimous, to agree, concur, or to act jointly, okay? This is the word wahada. Even when you count in Arabic, you start with the word wahid. So wahid, it means to laugh out of our but wahid means one. Islam, if you were going to write Allah, the first letter is alif, which looks like what you call the English letter number one. Islam, because Allah, we say Allahu Ahad. Allahu means he is Ahad, meaning one. Right? He's also known as al wahada which means the one, right? And if Allah is one, that means we are one without doubt or contradiction. So anytime you see anything that appears to be us being disunified, that's only an illusion, and it will pass or fade away. The conditions will change as the ethers change. Islam, when a certain set of circumstances take place, you'll see our people all of a sudden wanting to work together. All you got to do is hold the line. That's all you gotta do. Be where you're supposed to be. Right? When the holy day comes down, the sun begins to appear to set. On Friday, where is the Moorish American Muslim supposed to be at? I don't believe that. Said your cell out. In the temple. Why are you supposed to be in the temple? To be reminded of the law. That's the reason why you're supposed to be in the temple. To be reminded of the law. Because if you don't remind yourself of the law, you will forget. Right? Arabic were known as El Insan or El Nisa. Insan, Al, El Nisa. Man, woman. Islam, the root word of Insan and Nisa is Uns, which means forgetful. Islam, even in the book of Genesis, it talks about um, one of the descendants of Adam named Enos, right? And it says, when it mentions Enos' name, it says, Then men began to call upon the name of the Lord. Because before that, and that's when prayer was introduced. Because before that, there was no need to pray because 
Remember, Adam walked in the garden in the cool of the day with the representative of the Most High. Islam? So there was no, 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 no need, per se, to go through ceremonial form to pray to make that connection. Right? By the time you get down to Enos, it had severed itself. So his very name meant forgetful. Right? And that name was applied to all of humanity through Insan and Anissa, meaning man and woman, and also meaning these forgetful beings. Islam? And another name for Adam. And the language was zakar, and zakar is the word zikr, and zikr means to remember. Muzakar, muzakar, one who remembers. This is our brother, muzakar here. This is his name. One who remembers. Islam, in constant remembrance of the Most High, His laws, judgments, and commandments. Constant. This is why you're in the temple on Fridays. Islam, all right, and also to receive marching orders. You know, because we're in. These are unique days and times that we're in. And if we're not paying attention, we'll get swept up in the discord that's taking place in the world. Remember, we're supposed to be in it, but not of it. Remember that. Islam? So let's remember why our prophet called us and what he called us to. Not just our prophet, but like we've stated in previous meetings, especially the last meeting, right? That there was only one prophet sent to humanity, right? With one message that was adapted to its culture that it came to. Islam, the prophet came to us, gave us the same message that all the previous prophets and prophetesses came with. Islam, all right, so this is what we must remember. So, remember at all times, and I put this for, you know, in this manner in a specific way, because confusion, as I said, confusion weakens us. So this is the five that fell apart and fell, whose wills became weak. And this is the two whose wills remained ever strong and held their native plains. National and divine. Islam, Islam. we rise, giving all praises to Allah, on our 45 facing the east. We're in constant remembrance of the fact that we were ones that fell, but we seek to rise our vibrations to become the angel, the cherubims, and the seraphims that held. Islam, Islam. And that's all I have. Right? We, you know, we didn't intend on being long, but we had to be strong. Islam. Are there any questions, comments, concerns, or statements? You can ask a question. You need to make a comment. <laughs> All as well? I'm already listening. All as well. One brief thing I'd like to leave you with, um, parting with before I lower the meeting. Um, I saw an interesting documentary on uh, Kim Jong Un, um, the leader of North Korea, the other day. And them being an Asiatic nation, you know, there'll be things that they demonstrate in their customs that'll be similar to what our forefathers demonstrated. Kim Jong-un right now is being received by the masses of the North Korean people much more warmly than his father was. The reason why that is is because in looks, in how he carries himself, policy changes, everything, he reminds them of his grandfather, which was, you have Kim Jong-un now, Kim Jong-il before you know, and the one that was before him was the grandfather. And they look at him, Kim Jong-un, the present ruler, as the reincarnation of his grandfather. So the people, when they see him, when he walks in the city, they cry, they love their leader. Islam, and it's just, you know, we have to get to the point where we love our leaders. We don't love our leaders if we don't respect the ones that stand for us. Because see, what a leader does, leaders are interesting because leaders advocate for you when you think they're not. Because a leader is not in front of you all the time doing what you think you, you, they need to be doing, right? That doesn't mean they're not advocating for you. That's what makes them a leader, right? And if you don't believe in your leader, what you do is a simple test. Take your leader's name throughout your community and ask about it. Just ask. Just mention his name. Drop his name. What do you think about so and so and so? And if he's a good leader, generally, people will render you a favorable reply, right? But if he's done a bunch of discord and sedition and fitna, right, then perhaps you won't be rid of the favorable reply. All right? But the point is, if you don't honor your own, no one else will. And that's what I have with that. All right? And with that, I'll lower the meeting. Islam, Moors? Islam. Islam? Islam. Islam. Moors Science Temple of America, Noble Dry Lee, founder, home office, Chicago, Illinois, March, of, March 11th, 1929, a warning from the prophet to be read in every meeting.
I hereby inform all members that they must put an end to all radical and agitating speech while on their jobs, homes, or on the public streets. We advocate peace and not destruction. Stop trying out your cards with the Europeans, for it causes confusion. There has been much confusion caused by members trying out their cards. The cards are for your salvation. The failure of obeying my orders will be of severe consequence. We are for love, truth, peace, freedom, and when these principles are violated, justice must then take its course. Any member or group of members that seek to hold malicious feelings toward the temple or the prophet or to violate the divine covenant of the Moorish movement will receive their reward from Allah for their unjust deeds. All true Moors must obey the laws laid down to them by their prophet, and if they lose confidence in their prophet, give up your card and button, cease wearing your turban or fez, and return to the state where I, the prophet, found you. For this is a holy and divine movement founded by the prophet, noble Drew Ali. And if the prophet is not right, the temple is not right. The prophet is sending out a divine plea to all true Moorish Americans that they may do their part in protecting their prophet and the temple. This is an everlasting movement founded by the prophet through the will of Allah to redeem his people from their sinful ways. Peace. Noble Drew Ali Islam. 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 All praises are due to Allah the highest of honors to his holy divine prophet, Noble Drew Ali Islam Islam. Give me honors to our forerunner as well, the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey, uh, who did indeed want to stir up the nations. It's because of him that the nations of the earth were awakened to that zeal of nationalism, right? He woke not only us up, but 27 nations in Africa, all through the Caribbean and Central America, and so on and so forth, right? He did all that to prepare the way for our prophet to come and usher in the era of nationality. Islam, be not dismayed behind the things that you're seeing on the news. I keep driving that point home. These things are not new. Um, for those that were taking notes, or even for those who have phones, uh, leave a memo on your phone to yourself to Google if we want to do it now. Um, Klan March on Washington, D.C., 1928. When over a million Ku Klux Klan marched in uniform with the hoods and all on Washington, D.C. During the time of our prophet. So the Moorish Americans were strong in 1928 when the Klan did that march. And where were the Moorish Americans at? Minding their business. In fact, one year later, right? No, actually, that same year of July, the prophet did our own parade. And when we did the Moorish American parade, parade in you know, October, it was during October 15th to 20th, right? When he did that parade, he said, that is when we became a nation of people. That's when he announced us to the world that we had returned. You know, in the garbs of our forefathers, camels and the whole nine. Islam? But the point is, you don't be a reactionary to what Europeans are doing. You don't be a reactionary to what ones who don't have a nationality are doing. You don't follow behind them. That's the blind leading the blind. Islam, remember those instructions when it goes left, right? And if you're in doubt, call in and then see what, the, what our standing order is on that particular issue. Call it in. Islam, that's how we operate. You know, if, you, if you're not sure what our position is, call in. Through, run it through the chain. Islam, what's our position on this subject? Don't freestyle. Islam, we've been put in leadership positions because we've been groomed to do this. And we didn't just pop up yesterday. Islam, so we've seen a lot of stuff. These things are ebbs and flows. A lot of y'all are younger brothers and sisters. Right? So some of y'all haven't seen these things before. Right? So it's our duty, the ones that you see with the gray in their beards. It's their duty to remind you, Islam will take it, access to holy breath, breathe. Right? Remember the traditions and customs and the laws of your forefathers, and remember your instructions that came to you from the prophet. And with that, that we move in those in the name of Allah. Islam, one last thing. Um, I want to hit this word right here. Zakat. They'll tell you that there's five pillars of faith in Islam. i tell you that though. Mm -hmm. That's a lie. There aren't five pillars of faith in Islam. 
That concept's not even found in the Quran of Mecca. That started after the ascension or the transition of the Prophet Muhammad. That's a concept of man. There are five concepts in the Quran, but they're not mentioned together as five pillars. Right? And if you research this, leave me this one part. Tuscan, Ionic, Doric, Corinthian, and Composite. When you reset, research those, those are styles of architecture of pillars. And there's five of them, known to the Greek and Roman sons, right? That's dealt with in what they call Freemasonry, right? And when the Arabs got exposed to Freemasonry, European that is, right? That's when they picked up the concept of five pillars. That's where that came from. See, Prophet Noble Ali brought you Islam according to the mind state of your forefathers, right? And this concept, the Greek and Roman sons, only had five of those degrees out of the Egyptian 19 forms of pillars. Okay? So don't go all the way following, all the time following behind the European, the Greek and Roman sons. Islam, Prophet Noble Ali brought you your own degrees. You've got to stand on your own. Stand on what the Prophet Noble Ali brought you. Because it's a sure rock foundation that will never fail. Islam, Moors? Islam. So for those taking notes, study that, and that'll open up a whole other level of research for you. And these pillars, by the way, on all the uh, legislative buildings that you see with the pillars on the front, each one of them has a different design. Each one of them falls under a different degree. You've got to know what that is. Islam, I just want to leave, that, leave you with that as a parting gift.